great-grandfather was G.W. Jones. He was a famous and powerful black attorney around the turn of the 20th century. He passed away in 1908. He practiced law in Kansas and Mississippi. He was a strong black man. He was, in fact, he was the first county attorney for Graham County, a black black attorney for Graham County, Kansas. There's a appellate court judge in Kansas who's writing a book about him. So he was a prominent attorney in 1920. Or I'm sorry, in, 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 in 1880. His daughter married a gentleman called the Potato King, one of the richest black men in America at the time. His son, or should I say his, his, uh, his, uh, his sister married the Potato I think, well, I'm sorry. His daughter married the Potato King. He had a son. His son had a daughter. That daughter married a prominent black preacher in Castilla, Mississippi. His name was King. Last name was King. He gave birth to several children. One of them was my grandmother, Elmira King, rest her soul. She was married twice before she met my grandfather. The first black man she married was a prominent black man. His name was, last name was Mr. Smith. They had two children together. For whatever reason, they broke up. She married another gentleman who was the uh, mother of my auntie. He was also a prominent black man. Another wealthy landowner. Black men. I'm talking about black men. This is 1930s and 40s. So she had three kids. And she had a successful father and a successful great-grandfather and they were doing well. They were the king girls. They had money. They had success. They had land. This is in Mississippi in the 1920s and 30s. Well, unfortunately, my grandmother made my grand met my grandfather. His name was it was his, his name was Eddie Williams. They called him Teal. The first time she saw him, he was trying to she was trying to hustle him out of buying a pig. She, she, he was like, nah, he wasn't going for it. I guess she liked the fact that he told her no. The next time she saw him, he was on the chain gang for murder. He had unalived his wife because he had saw her or he had saw tracks coming from his house. So he unalived her and he was doing time in Parchment Prison. She saw him on the chain gang. Apparently she fell in love because the next time she saw him, he was down by a, a, a river or a creek, and she decided to go skinny dipping and entice my grandfather. And that's how they ended up being together. Well, my grandfather, my great grandfather found out about it, Mr. King. And he just said, he said, look, if you marry that man, I'm not going to have anything to do with you. And she was hard headed. So she took those three kids that she had. The oldest was old enough to leave, but she took her daughter and they end up moving from Castilla, Mississippi in this nice house run by this, this, this patriarchal black man who was a prominent reverend. And they end up over in Tutwala, Mississippi in a shanty, a shanty house picking cotton. So she went from a prominent black woman, from a prominent black family to picking cotton. And she picked cotton her whole life until she moved uh, to uh, California in the 1960s when my oldest uncle, Carl, moved her out there and the whole family. I love my grandmother, but she fell for that thug love. She put love over legacy. I have great respect from the ancestors, but what we have to do is we have to learn from them. My grandmother made an error because the children that she gave birth to, they were impoverished. They were picking cotton. It was disorder in the house. My granddaddy was a gambler. He was a killer. He was a, 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 a convent. He had all the women in the community. He had some good qualities, but not many. He was known for being a killer. He was known for unaliving people, him and his brothers. There are stories about them. And this is who she gave. This is who she married over those prominent men. 
it has taken me and, and my family has just been in turmoil because this is the legacy that they left. He didn't really want to work like that. She had to do all the work of this beautiful black woman, five foot eight, five foot nine, but used to stand up statuesque and tall. And he broke her down, kept her humble. He didn't care that she was a king, one of the king daughters. He broke her down. Shout out to Hootsie. Uh, we must demand nothing less excellence for the sake of grandchildren. Our project must be equipped going forward. Into the future generation. Gentlemen, all three visions are required. Hindsight, insight, and forefront. Shout out to you, bro. But yeah, he broke her down. Matter of fact, by the time I came to know who she was, when I was four or five, she walked hunched over just like this from picking cotton for 40 years. And she didn't have to do that because her other sisters, my auntie Florence, I guess this would be my, my great aunt, they had beautiful homes. They moved to California too, but they had beautiful homes. They had money, they had land, but my great granddaddy disowned my grandmother because she married that man and he didn't want to invest in it. And it has taken till 2024 to rebuild the legacy of GW Jones with me. He was the last lawyer in this family. A hundred years ago. And it took a hundred years to compensate for the mistake in Mary, uh, to correct the legacy that my grandmother made by, by marrying my grandfather. It's in my books, Rules to Live By, Volume 1, 2, and 3. I explain to you all this, so I mean this.